Sonic Forces is bad. I really didn't want to say it, I promise. I wanted this game to be just as good as the hype after the reveal trailer last summer, but it seems like I, as a 3D Sonic fan, will be forced to suffer and wonder how Sega has repeatedly gone so wrong over the years. Sonic Generations was released six years ago. How do you make a game like that, or a game like Sonic Adventure 2, which I understand has issues, but I still enjoy it to this day, and then make Lost World, multiple boom games, and now this? We even had Sonic Mania, a fantastic game developed by indie creators and fans, and the fucking company who came up with the characters still can't make a good game? Oh, wow. Press A to jump, huh? No shit! Sonic Forces really does feel enticing and epic in some portions and levels. The music and atmosphere is well developed and it almost feels fun until you realize that you don't have to do anything. My main issue with Sonic Forces is that it feels like an empty, lifeless shell of a game due to its lack of any engaging gameplay or thought out level design. A lot of the levels are most easily beaten by either holding forward or just not touching the controller at all. My favorite example being the water level, where putting the controller down was easier than attempting to not fall off by actually turning. Dude, I haven't fallen off the water slide yet, I figured out the trick, you just don't touch the fucking controller. Oh, I finished the level! <laughs> the homing attack is overused and has had its range extended from that of previous Sonic games, not to mention that it's so easy to aim to the point where it feels like you're playing the game on autopilot. And there's also quick time events. Quick time events! I hate quick time events! Everyone hates quick time events! Sonic, why would you do this to us? As soon as I feel like I'm actually in control of the game and get to make some sort of decision, the level's already over. I finished many levels in under two minutes and completed the entire game in under three hours, which is really short for a price tag of $40. Even though the atmosphere and music design was well done, the game feels even more lifeless due to small factors that really make a game feel immersive. For example, none of the characters have idle animations to my knowledge, and it's hard to tell if they're even breathing when you stop controlling them. Stepping away from the gameplay for a minute to talk about the game's premise and story, it tries to do some edgy shit, but it just doesn't make sense and it's built around the power of friendship. I literally felt like I was playing through a Sonic OC creator's fever dream where they just get to fight bosses by holding hands with Sonic and running through the sunset. Like you can just fail the quick time event, they just trip like a couple of idiots and keep going like nothing happened, you don't even have to play the game! Speaking of the custom character, I thought this was going to be what really put the last shovel of dirt over 3D Sonic's grave, but I have to say, it was the only redeeming factor just based on how ridiculous it was. I mean, you can be incredibly creative with your character, or you can just make, uh, Knuckles the dog. Do it! Come on! Kill me! I'm here! Come on! Do it now! Every single time a cutscene played that included my custom character, I actually laughed out loud seeing what looked like a shitty bootleg version of Knuckles making stupid facial expressions and parkouring across the city. Now this, this is art, people. Together we can show the world what we can do. You are next to me and I'm next to you. Push me on through until the battle's won. No one's gonna get fired to us. I mean, don't get too excited though, the custom character gameplay still sucks. You can kinda just run with an awkward momentum that stops every time you use your grapple hook, and you can just hold down your unlimited charge flamethrower to kill all the robots around you instantly. Hard mode my ass. The story of Sonic Forces, if you're even interested, involves Eggman creating Infinite, the edgiest character I've seen in a long time. Like, listen to the lyrics of his song, who is this supposed to appeal to? I am a dangerous weapon, I am the sharpest of blades. Anyway, he sends Infinite to capture Sonic, who is successfully defeated by his past enemies. You know, the cool ones, like Metal Sonic, Shadow, and Chaos. Except, you see Chaos? Yeah, he's just like, not in the game. In any level or boss fight, he's only in the cutscenes. Oh, and Zavox there too for some reason. So after Sonic gets defeated, he gets thrown into prison where he's reportedly tortured for mo- Wait, what the fuck? Tortured? He's probably gonna look like shit when they rescue him. Oh, never mind, he's exactly the same person. Just cracking bad jokes every five seconds while he runs through the level. There's sand everywhere! Green Hill's looking a lot more like Sand Hill right now. <laughs> After Sonic is rescued by knockoff Knuckles, Infinite is tasked with taking him out, but he doesn't kill him when he has the chance. I feel like no one in this game will ever actually kill anyone else. Like, look at how much time classic Sonic has where he could just spin jump into Eggman and fucking kill him right here. 
And speaking of classic Sonic, holy shit, why are his levels the worst ones in the game? They brought him back after people liked his levels in generations, but they somehow managed to fuck up 2D levels even harder than the 3D ones. I mean, at this point, I'm beginning to think Sonic Mania didn't even exist. Classic Sonic gains no speed past a max limit, and in several instances, the speed he gains from running down a massive hill isn't enough to push him up a hill smaller than my hope for the future of Sonic games. Now, after all this berating, I feel like I should at least take time to mention something good about this game. Eggman's voice actor is still as solid and enjoyable as ever, and there's like one boss fight against the Egg Dragoon that's decent, but other than that and a few songs from the game's soundtrack, I couldn't find much to commend at all. The soundtrack is really strong in some areas like the main theme and the credits, but a lot of it is either cheap sounding MIDI instruments for classic Sonic or dubstep for 3D Sonic. Yes, I said dubstep. No, I don't know why. Again, how do you go from this? To this? There's a couple levels where you get to play as Shadow, and this demon game decides to take a sacred song from Sonic Adventure 2, remix it, and put it in the fucking water slide level. Uh, I feel that I don't have much left to talk about other than this game's final boss, which, although taking me 20 minutes to complete, felt a lot more like bullshit than any semblance of real difficulty. In one of the phases, he smashes the ground so fast that you literally can't react to it or input a jump in time, you just have to be prepared by standing in a certain spot already. Once you stop Infinite from throwing the sun into the earth and stop Eggman or whatever, you get a beautiful little cutscene about friendship and working together to build a brighter future. Alright guys, it's time we cleaned up the mess that Eggman left this world in. And I'm not talking about those illusions he dreamed up for us. We need to fix the real world we all live in. Right. <laughs> true that. True that. True that. Are you... Are you kidding me?